four, three, two, one. Let's lay some bricks. All right, Mike. The competition's now underway. We're in about an hour and a half, two hour, what are we, two and a half hour delay? About two hour delay, yeah. Two hour exactly. delay. But you know what? Here for the Specmix Brick there, 500. Anything can happen, anything will, but we're going to get it in, right? It's not for the faint of heart, Nick. It's not for the faint of heart. So you've got Mike Rolf here and Nick Blahoviak. Let me see if I can make this happen. Nick Blahoviak here, too. Your dueling sponsor, your dueling uh, MCs for today. We're going to take you, take you through the contest all day long. What do you say, Mike? Why don't we go check it out and see what's happening? Right, I'm gonna grab my, I'll catch up with you. I'm going to grab my... Great sponsors here today making this happen for everybody. But here we've got the contest just starting. So you can see here, install one, we've got a brick lead going up. Well, interesting to watch how much time these competitors will spend building their leads and how they've oriented the wall to start. So if you look here, this first course is crossing. Get over to the next competitor. You know, it's the first course, laying their lead on the other side based on their preference for speed. He did not cross his brick. You'll notice that most of these competitors are going to lay relatively short leads. The idea is to not spend all your time building a big lead, get the brick in the middle of the wall as quick as you can. Some guys might spot and go. Let's see if we can find somebody with a different strategy. Take a check in here with Mr. Jake Brock, former winner, two different times to Las Vegas. So Jake's looking to build a pretty big wall this year. He's going to start with a pretty big lead, leveling up nice. Make sure that he gets those brick mortar beds set right so that when he runs his line in the middle, he'll keep two height and not get himself an infraction for head joint or bed joint. You'll notice that Jake's mason tender has a different kind of strategy on the brick. Notice how Jake spends very little time manipulating his brick because they're set in such a way that he just shuffles them into the wall. Yeah, Nick, look how smooth he is with that trowel, huh? Yeah, this is not Jake's first time. Extension of his arm. And we got lucky today, too, with all the rain, the, the brick we did cover. But uh, these good building brick here, a uh, little bit harder. So making sure those brick aren't wet really helps these guys out so they can lay a true brick. Don't get any tip brick in the wall. And here in Wisconsin today, it's about 48 degrees, so we don't have to worry about the mortar setting up too quick though. Like we'll down south. Let's check in with Nick Miller here real quick. So hey Nick. Hey. So I see you got a strategy there for the brick. What are you doing exactly to help Jake out here? Just setting him up. So turn and turn, rip him in. Setting them up, right? Facing the right way, slam them in there. Get her done. So the mason tender is a pretty intricate or important part of the competition. Your mason tender can actually help you pick up several brick. They can work with you as you're laying the wall. They can talk to the mason, but they can't hand any material to the mason. All they can do is manipulate the brick on the mort on the feeder plank of the mortar board and, and the mortar on the mortar boards for that matter. Um, but they are a team. Of course, we have plumb point deduction, so you can see here, plumbing the ends of the wall to make sure that 
when it comes time for judging, you won't get any brick deduction. That could be a 50 brick deduction from the final count. Now you'll notice here that on this particular wall, this mason's starting out with a stack bond and moving over to a half bond. You might say, boy, it doesn't look that great, it's not that right, but in the competition itself, we do not count or judge that first course of brick. That's the starter course. Watching Tyler Beaumont and Jason Harding with Walsh Masonry. Notice here that he's raised the mortar boards. Just kind of a preference for the mason, but the less tired your mason gets in this competition, the more he'll be able to do. Of course, if your mason wins here, they are a team. They both get to go to Vegas and compete for that nice Ford truck you can see in the background there. So strategy is the key. And keep yourself from getting fatigued. A couple brick may make the difference at the end. Let's move down the way here. Who do we have installed here? We're going to head down, we're going to check in with Roman Grable. You can see here Roman has got a lead built on both sides of the wall, not a real big lead. So his strategy is to get it up, get my lines pulled, and get to the meat of the wall where I can start making some money. Again, checking his wall for plumb. Make sure he doesn't get hit with a deduction. Check in. Let's check in with stall one, Mike. So here we have Delton Bongo and Andrew Oliveras with the Bolt Company working one lead. Take a look at the brick and the way that they're stacking them up in the back. Their team, a little bit different method, spreading the brick apart, not turning them necessarily, but giving them room to go ahead and grab those brick and shuffle them into wall just a little faster. here at the competition today we're mixing that good spec mix mortar we've got our sales expert from Milwaukee Richard Stevens mixing today that's the reason why he's in sales we're using that dust shroud so you can see almost no dust coming out of the bottom of the silo gravity silo while Richard mix using the long handle keep yourself away from the mixer we're gonna go through about five yards of material today, five yards of mortar for the bricklaying, Spectrum's Bricklayer 500, and then another yard or so for the junior Spectrum's Bricklayer 500. We've got some apprentices competing today. That's coming right after, or right between this competition and when we announce awards during the judging period. Here we are at 
Stall number six. Mason, Matt, Fred, and Ben Rausch with Myring Construction. Just finishing up the lead on this side of the wall. Ten minutes in, fifty minutes to go. So at this point now, there we go. That's teamwork at its finest. Here we've got Mr. Brian Loshing with Myron Construction. Come on over here, Brian. How you doing? Good, how are you? So, you've been a mason foreman up here in Wisconsin forever, now superintendent of masonry. 26 years. 26 years. What do you think today and what do you think of the contest? I think it's very interesting. It's good to see all these guys out here competing against each other and it's good for everybody. That's right, good for the industry. So what do you give your team a chance on here? What do you think? Are you gonna be in the money? I definitely think so. Yeah, Matt's one of our better bricklayers. He's fast, quality. You just gotta get him mad. Like like his tender said, you get him mad and then he goes even faster. So we'll be looking for your tender here to throw a brick at you sooner or later. <laughs> get that taken care of. Absolutely. But so far the strategy here is to get a couple of really nice leads up. Make sure that you keep the work straight in between the lines and once he gets going on that speed side, we'll see how fast he can put him in and keep him straight here just in a little while. So here we are at stall number seven, Mason Jesse Sturger, tender Dustin Edelman with C.D. Smith. You see here he's got one lead up, nice. This side of the wall working the other lead, let's come down this way. Different way to place the brick for the Mason. Again, whatever makes them faster, you can see that he's got them actually set in the right orientation. So there they're working a shiner strategy. Make sure that when the mason grabs the brick, and he's laying two at once, all right. Twice as fast with half the effort. Let's get a closer look at this technique. There you go at home, folks. How do you do it faster for the competition? Notice these masons going really pretty fast. As a matter of fact, they're going to lay as much brick in an hour as a normally normal mason would lay in about a day. So some of the techniques you see here, they are things that these guys have thought through about how to go a little faster for the contest itself. 
Uh, you wouldn't see them doing this on a normal job. But again, like I said, these guys are going to lay enough brick in an hour uh, to equal about a normal day's work. So you take any of these guys competing today, you slow them down, get them going about half as fast as they are right now. Some of the best masons in the country. We'll move down a stall, we'll check in with Dave Price. Here you can see on Dave's wall, we ran into a bit of an issue here with leveling up the parking lot. Dave went a little higher. So we're gonna see if this worked. Again, we don't count anything below the first course as laid. So Dave's up in the air a little higher. Which means Dave's gonna get a little tireder towards the end, but we'll see. He's got big shoulders on him. We'll see how high it gets. And a bit of a bigger lead on this side. Yeah, Nick, these guys are having to slow down a little bit. This competition right now, we got a lot of rain in that 11, 11 to 2 o'clock hour, hour or so. Uh, we did our best to keep those brick dry, but you can see they're having to take their time building their leads. Uh, the brick are a little wet, and they're, they're having a little trouble keeping them where they want them. So, but all, all the same stuff that happens on a job site, right? Yeah, it's tough when it rains. Um, brick a little bit harder here, so they tend to swim a little bit in the joint, but they've got them big holes, which helps them. The mortar interlocks in the holes of the brick. That holds everything together nice. Again, the real trick here, you can watch Dave spread mud, is to be able to spread mud evenly and at the right depth, so that when you're laying your brick, you don't end up with a bed joint reduction. So the ability of the mason, the skill of the mason, to trowel the mortar is really a big issue a big skill that's needed here for the competition. Let's check in with our last stall here. So here we're at stall nine with Nick Dowling and Jacob Dowling, Dowling Construction. Where are they out of Mike? Uh, they're out of the Fox Valley, Nick. Fox Valley Masons. Here we are. We've got a second lead built, building a bigger lead on this side. So strategy here is a little bit bigger lead on one side. Not on the other end here. A little bit smaller lead on the other side. So they're trying to get to the point where they can start laying brick in the wall, get their money brick in, so they can start pointing towards the championship here. Today, our competitors are competing for over total purse, a little over four thousand dollars worth of goodies out here. The uh, the first place. Bricklayer is going to get first place. Bricklayer is going to get about six hundred dollars, and the uh, the craftsman as well is going to take home that six hundred dollars. Um, we like to keep that prize equal in this competition because we believe that the uh, quality of the project is just as important as how many brick you lay, right? So um, with that, um, the winners obviously going to get that trip to to um, to Las Vegas and. Um, just checked in on our time. We're 20 minutes in, guys. 20 minutes in.
That's a big prize pool, and the ability to go home seeing you're the best mace in the whole state of Wisconsin. That's a big. It's a big boost to your ego, isn't it, Mike? It's a big deal. And you heard you heard uh, Nick Rock, one of our returning champions from years ago, say he's he's going for both. He's going for both. So double big, winner. See right. what happens. Well, that's all the money that takes care of that. Why don't we check in with some of our sponsors? What do you think? Yeah, let's there. take a walk over. Why don't you take a walk? All right. Nick just handed me the the con here, so I'm going to walk on over and see if we can touch base with some of our sponsors who came by today to participate. A lot of them took off because the weather turned so bad for a while. It was really bad downpour for us. Here's Jake Brock in action. You'll notice Jake, his plan, his technique. Take a look down his wall and see what he's really doing here. Jake's running in the back course first. So the idea is the overhand side of the wall, one that he's got to lay up over the front wall, is harder to do. So he's getting that one in first so you can see the line better. Uh, for him, that's going to help him keep that backside straight so he gets less deductions. Now. The problem with that strategy is that you've got to be really good at then coming back on the front side. There's not a lot of room between the whites. So Jake's strategy here is I'm going to get the back side up, at least a few courses first, make sure that I can see it real well, make sure that I'm laying to that line, and I keep myself out of harm's way on the deductions. Again, generally the person that lays the most brick does not win the competition. You've got to lay it, not only a good brick, not only a lot of brick, but they got to be laid well. So now with that front wall, the, or the course nearest to Jake, not in the way, he can get right into this overhand side and really lay the brick. Of course, that overhand brick laying, you don't see a lot of that anymore today. Uh, most of the time we're just veneering a building, but sometimes you get into a downtown situation, you do some rehab, you're putting a building up right next to another building, you'll end up laying everything from the inside out. Jake here has practiced this technique more than once, I guarantee you. Now you'll notice too that as Jake's putting the head joint on, he's just kind of clipping the head joint. So again, in real construction, if he's building your house or your school, Jake will put a little more, a bit more mortar than that in the head joint. But for the competition, he just got to get a little bit in. So it's really a technique that these guys are using to try to win the contest, make themselves go a little faster. Of course, you have to have full head and bed joints. If not, you're only allowed 20 of those, and then you lose brick from your total brick count. 50, actually. I think here we have a little bit of a... Hey, everybody. Tom, come on in here. Tom, come on. Nope, come on in by me. What I'm okay. going to do, I'm going to do Tom it right now. This is Tom Hale. Uh, national sales manager, right? right for county materials. Yep. Tell us a little bit about county materials and what you guys are, are doing around the state and the nation and all about your support of the industry. Well, county materials is one of the largest suppliers in the state of Wisconsin for masonry products. Uh, we've got four plants in the state of Wisconsin. Uh, great event coming here to help support the masonry industry. Uh, introducing our new 32 inch long block here at the, sh at, at the event. It's just kind of neat for everyone to see it. It's a great venue. People can actually come out and see some of the stuff that's going on here. So thanks for the invite. Thanks for supporting it as well. You bet. Proud to have you. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hey, and one more major sponsor here for us, just like County, but this is Joe Beekle. 
with hey, Fond du Lac Stone and Natural Stone Veneers International. Again, thanks for hosting us. Um, tell us a little bit about your company and, and what's going on in your world here. Well, being born and raised in the stone quarry industry, this is just a great venue for us to, you know, bring everybody here on a, you know, a masonry day like today, you know, out in the quarry where, you know, Mother Nature started all this. Um, so yeah, you know, the weather played a little bit of havoc, but uh, we're getting her going and she's drying up now and uh, I, I think we got good spirits. So you guys are good, doing a good job and uh, yeah, we'll get through this and send somebody to Las Vegas. Yep, absolutely. No, we really appreciate your hospitality. You guys have been great and uh, looking forward to seeing who can pull us off and get the ticket to Vegas, right? Yeah, absolutely. We'll see you there. All right. Sounds good. Thanks, Thanks Joe. All right. That was a couple of our sponsors. That was a couple of our sponsors. Um, we'll get another one. Another couple of guys here, or gals, um, as we go along. Um, let's get back to some bricklaying action. Yeah, check out these walls. They're starting to take shape now. Kind of a cool view. For your viewers at home, well, Tyler Beaumont, first go around here for Spec Mix Bricklayer 500 Regional. He's taking his time. Like I said, bricks are a little wet. These guys are taking their time, making sure that they're uh, laying these brick to the line, making sure their head joints and bed joints are going to be within tolerance. And uh, yeah, precision. Tyler Beaumont, Jason Harding right oh, now. Roman, Ga Roman Grable. KMI, these guys right now are in the lead. They're, they're working on their third course already, but they've got both sides filled in. They're, they're double wiping at the same time. It's going back and forth. So in this case, what Roman's doing is he's spreading his mortar all the way down and all the way back, and then he's laying brick down the wall, going forward, and then he's gonna turn around and come straight back. So brick layer either lays brick, Working forward or coming backwards? We'll see what he does when he makes the turn. Right now he's working forward. Right now he's going to leave the total brick now. So his strategy is different than Jake's. Action here, guys. Get my camera to go in the right direction. Yeah. All right, hey, once again, want to give, give props to our, our regional sponsors. Without them, this, this little event wouldn't be able to happen. We've got Natural Stone Veneers International, Fondelac Stone, Lakes Brick and Block, Meyer Construction, County Materials, Land and Stone. RH Equipment Services, Ganya Clay Products, United Brick and Fireplace, BW Supply, Milwaukee MCAA, The Brickyard, Lance Construction, Holiday Automotive, Precision Cutstone, Ameriglobe, Champion Brick, Muse Trucking, Mackie Trucking, Bricklayers and Allied Crafts Workers, Walsh Masonry, KMI Construction, and Superior Masonry Builders. Once again, these guys 
helped us put all this together. It's, it's a team effort, just like construction, masonry in general. It's a big team effort. You can't do it alone, and without them, it wouldn't be possible. Let's look at some more brick land. As we watch a little brick laying here, let's not forget our national sponsors IQ Power Tools, Hydra Mobile, Multi Quip, uh, supplying us those great mixers here, the best mixer on the planet, Block Ladder, Prism Corporation, Iron Age, they're the work shoes for the working man, Coleman and Bernard, Stabila, Stabila Levels, Belden Brick, Steel, Gatorback Mortar Boards. Let us not forget, of course, Ford trucks. Of course, the winner today is going to take home a brand new Ford in Vegas, only if they win there, too. Well, that's what these guys are competing for, not just a chance to be the best Mason in Wisconsin, but to get themselves down to the world of concrete this year and compete to become the world's best bricklayer, take home that brand new Ford truck. See a mason tender working hard. So we talk about spreading mortar and how important it is. Here's your leader right now at the moment in terms of brick count. His strategy is to bring the mortar down the wall, work that back, and then lay your brick down. So the more fluid you are in spreading mortar, the faster this goes. The trick is no wasted time or motion. Approaching the halfway point of the contest. Two bricks at once.
work out here today, all considering the rain. Sponsors, people watching, cheering on the fans. Of course, we've got a junior bricklaying competition coming up. At the conclusion of the Specialist Bricklayer 500 while they're judging. Hey Nick, have you looked at Jake's wall over here? His strategy? Obviously, he wasn't willing to talk about what he was going to do, but you can kind of tell right now what he was thinking, huh? Yeah, so Jake's got a brick count in mind on what he's going to get for the contest. He built his leads right to the height, and he knows he can get. He's on a pace now to get that back wall up at a little past the halfway point of the competition. So you get tired while you do this. For Jake, the hardest end here is going to be that overhand wall. He's going to leave himself the easy side for the home stretch. We'll see how it pans out. Jake right around 600 brick. Precision to the line right there. here I want to talk to gentlemen he's actually an old friend of mine mr. Rick Scaife uh, Rick you've been in the industry for a long long time yep you've been a mason you've been a contractor now you're a trainer now I'm a trainer why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do and how you do it um, I teach at Madison College in Madison and I teach at our training center in Chippewa Falls almost 40 apprentices between the two places and we give them uh, bookwork which is now standardized across North America, the United States and Canada. Um, so if somebody gets transferred and goes to another state, they use the same books. So no matter where you go, it's the same. Um, usually I do the bookwork in the morning and in the afternoon we go in the shop and we do uh, different projects. Um, stuff usually that they wouldn't get experience in in the field all the time. So if they don't get asked to make an arch or something like that, then they can, they've had a little bit of experience in it. They can go and lay it out. They know how to do it. So Rick, you're, you've got your union union instructor. Yep. You're working with first, second, and third year apprentices. First, second, and third year apprentices, right? And is there a journeyman upgrade training that you do too, and um, OSHA training and all that good stuff too? Um, I I do a little bit of the journeyman upgrade it's mostly Mike Williams that does the journeyman upgrade training yep. and uh, all over the state and we do everything from safety to the new technology like the mule yep. we train on that and everything in between so lots of new stuff going on in masonry and trying to get the next group in and, yep. and ready to go right we want to be the best hands in the business there you go well thanks for stopping by and giving us a little All right, Mike, we've got 20 minutes to go. All right. Let's check out some of these bricklayers over here on this side. All right, Nick, stall number nine. Again, we've got Nick Dowling and his son, Jacob Dowling. Starting to take shape now. They're running that dual brick strategy. It's 
spread the mortar down both sides, lay one way, come back, lay the other. Here we are raising the lines, helps him hold his height, a little weight on there, make sure we don't lose the line, spread the mortar down the wall. Of course we have the good spec mix mortar today, spreads like butter. Spreading just one side of the wall down. shot at making sure the back side's lined up. Nothing in the way. Here we got Dan Newens. What's that, Dan? We have 18 minutes left to go. Dan's our Main mudslinger here in Wisconsin. Well, him and Richard, but we'll give Dan the credit. Yeah. Dan's one of our chief organizers. Richard! Richard! Come on over, say Let's bring hi. a couple of our main mudslingers here from Wisconsin in. We've got Dan and Richard. Dan Newens, Richard Stevens, our two mudslingers cover the state of Wisconsin. Your mortar experts. They really did a lot of the work organizing the event today. Guys, how's it going? What do you think? I think the show's going great. Richard's in charge of all the mixing and, and taking care of, of the masons on the wall. and. I've been kind of doing the organizing and keeping track of the, the logistics of everything. The Masons are doing awesome. How's, how's your team, Richard? I'm good. We're keeping the mud out, trying to keep up with these guys. They're moving pretty fast, but we're doing our best to keep up with them. Right on. So who's who's going to win today? Dan, your guy, or Richard, one of your customers? Uh, I'm moving for my guy. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a feeling we all are going to win because uh, these guys are doing a nice job. We have a lot of first-timers here. Um, so it, it's interesting to see the different styles that they're learning and doing. And, um, some good work going in here so happy to see i think we're gonna win yeah so dan and richard have been here working in the state as your mortar expert for years and years now uh, two of our seasoned veterans and great job organizing the event today and supporting the industry guys good work yeah, thanks, Nick. Appreciate it. of course richard's mixing for us today too so he and he's camouflaged so we can't see him so that's nice back to the bricklaying action here we have dave price the wall. Yeah, you see Dave kind of tapping the brick back, moving around just a little bit. There is a head joint tolerance between an eighth of an inch and three quarters. That seems like a lot. It's actually allowed by code. Um, normally on a job site, you'll see these joints between 3 eighths and 5 eighths, right in that range. So you'll see when they get to the end, they come back up to their lead. Sometimes you've got to adjust the brick because they do not want to get deducted for a head joint or bed joint in fraction. We'll show that later in the judging a little bit.
We got 15 minutes to go in the competition. Let's see a little more brick laying down the line here. Back to our friend with a dual brick laying. Got a good wall going here, about three courses in. by laying two bricks at once. What he's doing is he's eliminating, kind of having the mortar become a problem between the brick. So you'll see on some of the other walls where they go up one white and then the other, or specifically when you run the back white up first, you get mortar fins in between the bed joints. If you notice how tight these brick are, and when we're laying a double white wall here, two bricks wide, uh, that can cause you problems if the wall starts bowing out It'll cause your brick to tip, it'll cause things to become on plumb, and then more deduction. So, interesting strategy. We'll see how it pans out. Of course, it takes a pretty strong hand to do so. And you notice he's laying the brick through the cores. The idea here is to waste less motion or use less motion. Tire you out a little less, less turns or less grabbing and pushing towards the wall. Again, we got a lot of great sponsors out here. We couldn't do it without them. Our national sponsors, IQ Power Tools, great equipment, dustless saws. So if you're building a building right now, silicon rules, that kind of a thing, it's unbelievable. You can cut a brick right in the, right in the room of a house, not make any dust. Multi-Quip, uh, the guys that make the mortar mixers, they make so much equipment too beyond that. Lights, pumps, concrete pumps, grout pumps for masonry. Great supporters of the Spec Mix Bricklayer 500 in the masonry industry for years. Uh, Marshalltown Trowel, the trowel of the mason, right? So Marshalltown, some of the best equipment, best trowels, best hand tools for the mason. Block lotter, block lotter work pants. I see some guys wearing some block lotter stuff here today. Built for construction, their, their clothing. Multi-quip, uh, Hydromobile, elevating efficiency, they're the hydraulic scaffold folks. Stabila, uh, Stabila levels, mason levels. Here we can see the last two brick being laid on the course again. Paying real close attention to making them all fit. So of a head joint and fraction, usually get them right there up against that lead. We've got steel, steel equipment, steel saws. Holman and Bernard. Holman and Bernard, they've got great reinforcing for masonry, cleaners, air weather barriers. Belden Brick, our, our national brick sponsor. Gatorback Mortar Boards, Iron Age, they make some shoes for construction. Steel toe, but comfortable, unbelievable, super durable. They've got shoes that mortar won't even eat. It's unbelievable. Of course, you've got the Quick Creek companies, construction products, cements, grouts, anything that you might need for a job site, and of course, Spec Mix, your brand for masonry mortars and masonry grouts on your job sites. Our host here today, Fond du Lac Stone and Natural Stone Veneers International. We couldn't do it without the help of all these folks.
main walls and just walk home. Jesse's really getting in the rhythm now, boys. I love it. Just getting warmed up now. Now the key for these guys is going to be, yep, they're feeling the pressure, they're feeling the time crunch. So now's not the time to slip up and put any bad bricks in the wall. Or they might get a deduction. So it's a big mind game too. Concentration's key. That labor, he's even more important right now. He's watching everything that that mason's doing, making sure he's got enough mud, got enough brick. He's got to check that wall once in a while, see if he sees anything crazy. Help his mason out. Some good looking walls coming up here, guys. Again, while we're watching these guys finish up their walls here, definitely want to thank our regional sponsors here, our local sponsors, Natural Stone Veneers and Final Act Stone. Couldn't do without them. They're creators of beautiful thin veneer and full veneer natural stone. Nobody does it better. Lakes Brick and Block, Polyox donated. All these nice eight inch CMUs that you're looking at here. Fire construction, county materials, land and stone, RH equipment services. RH donated the nice uh, forklift. We couldn't put mortar in the, in the silo today without it. Ghana Clay Products, United Brick and Fireplace, BW Supply, Milwaukee MCA, The Brickyard, Lance Construction Supplies. Holiday Automotive, Precision Cut Stone, Ameriglobe, Champion Brick, Muse Trucking, Mackey Trucking, Bricklayers and Allied Crafts Workers, Walsh Masonry, KMI Construction, and Superior Masonry Builders. Got to give a big shout out to all those companies and all those folks for helping us out today. Again, team effort here. We couldn't do it without them. Here we're looking at Jake Brock again. Picking them up and putting them down. Concentrating. Old Nick here, he's shaking up the mud. Watch out, Nick. Gonna get run over, buddy. There's good laborer right there shaking up the mud. That technique. Great mason needs a great labor. It's just how it goes. Again, teamwork. Like Jake's trowel, an extension of his arm. Old Nick Miller, the laborer over here, is an extension of the team. I just wanted to check this out here. We're down at stall. Where are we? Uh, stall two. This is Roman. Yep, stall two. That's where Roman. Roman is still going strong. That two brick strategy. Check this out. That's been an hour straight of grabbing and setting two bricks just like that. Didn't even see that, Nick. That is pretty cool. Now, I haven't seen anybody do that. I've probably been to over 100 regionals in Vegas 20 times now. I don't know if I've ever seen somebody actually make a brick like that. He's got a pretty good sized wall going here, so we'll see how he does. I guarantee he doesn't need to lift weights tonight. Well, no, but hopefully he ate his Wheaties this morning. Good job, Roman. Keep it up. Not much time left. Don't leave anything out on the course here.
Jason, how's Tyler doing? Doing good. You keeping up? Yeah. Keeping Are up. you keeping up? Yeah, That's keeping the big important yeah. part, right? Yeah. <laughs> we got Jason shaking that mud up. The fine spec mix type in Portland lime. Doesn't get any better than that, guys. There he is. Yep. Tyler's a pretty smooth character here. If I remember correctly, Tyler's dad was a mason at one point as well. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree, I guess. Same with Jake Brock over here. His brother, his dad, his grandpa, they've all been in the trade. Fast down. Four minutes. Let's get over here and check out the other side here, stall number eight. Sorry, stall number nine with Roman. All right, <laughs> Nick Dowling, I'm struggling. I'm the one that's getting tired out here, and I'm not even laying brick. Silky smooth. Looking good, looking good. Getting to the end here, guys. The forearms are screaming. Looking good. Come on, guys. Keep it up, keep it up. Jesse Steger, he's getting down in the end. He's going to be putting, he's putting a couple courses on on the front of the wall, on the working side of the wall. It's his strategy to make sure that he's getting as many brick in as he can. The easier side of the wall to lay is the front side. That's what all these guys are used to laying. Uh, not much we're, at about, we're at about two and a half minutes here. Two and a half minutes to go. All two right. Two and a half minutes to go. Why don't we get to some of the bigger walls? We'll do a check in on Jake real fast and I'll get Dan over All right, sounds good. All right, we're rolling back over. Again, here's Roman, Roman Grable. He's definitely in contention. Got a good looking wall. He's double checking his leads, making sure everything is within the plum tolerances. Doesn't want to get dinged for, for a plum problem. We'll let him get back to work. And here we go. Jake Brock using his nice Stabila level. Making sure everything's within tolerance. Again, you wouldn't see this kind of kind of technique on a on a real job site. Two minutes, guys. Some modifications here for the contest. Actually, a minute. One minute thirty seconds. All right, we're getting down. A minute thirty. A minute and a half. Coming right down to the end here, Mike. You can see these guys scrambling. Take a look at over here. We're laying just at the front side of the wall, just spotting and going. He knows there's not a lot of time left, so he's not wasting his time on the line. He's not doing anything. He's just laying a few bricks. He's a couple extra in. Right at the end, to hopefully win. Well, hopefully, I see these guys every year. One minute left. One minute to go. The last brick. They're struggling. They're tired. One minute left. Trying to get a couple more brick in, and this is where mistakes can happen. He's got to slow down a little bit. Concentrate. Got to concentrate. 45 seconds. Thirty seconds. Now oh, here we're sitting down here looking at Jake again. Looks like his strategy worked out. Twenty seconds. 15 seconds. Five, down. All right, let's Rouse down, gentlemen. Let's give them a big round of applause. All right. Woohoo!
All right, these guys are going to take a five-minute break right now. So the guy's striking here. All right. All right, everybody. Mason's back into your wall, into your stalls. We're going to get going to striking. All right, I'm going to count it down. Five, four, three, two, one. Strike him up. All right, so we've got 20 minutes to tool the walls right now. 20 minutes to tool, what they're doing right now is they are cleaning up the walls. They're using their joiners, concave struck joint here. So you can see just like on a job site, if they have any holes like that, you can see they're filling them in. They are tooling the joints. They get to work all the way around the wall now because the back side of the wall here is actually finished. Now the mason tender, and here's the fun part. The mason tender can't actually tool or touch the wall. Well, this is the one chance where the mason tender's at home, all you tenders. You get to help the mason out. You get to watch what he's doing and yell at him a lot. Tell him to fix the holes, get it done. So it is a team. Uh, mason gets to use a joiner, gets to use a brush. That's it. No liquids, no water, no washing. You can't move or adjust the brick. Can't move or adjust the brick. Lucky it's a regional. Um, but the idea here is to, to quickly try to clean up these mortar joints and make it look as close as you can to what you find on an actual job site. It also makes it a lot easier for us to judge when they're done. A lot of different techniques for this. Here we see a mason using a barrel joiner. He's hitting the head joints first and he'll come back here run the beds. Kind of typical. Same thing here, but in this case, our mason friend has a trowel mortar. That's fine. He can use the trowel to hold the mortar. When he gets to a point where he has a bee hole in the wall, what he's going to do is he's going to push the mortar off the trowel and press it into the joint. It's almost a tuck pointing method. Let's see if we can find a bee hole. Turns out he did such a good job, he didn't really need that other trowel. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Nick, that's one clean wall. Yeah, we got a craftsmanship. There we go. See, that's how you do it. We did that just for a few people at home, I think. <laughs> So let's see what we've got going over here. Anybody doing anything different? Another barrel joiner down on this end. And tucking in a head joint. And you want to fill those bee holes. They're allowed 20 bee holes. But the idea here is that we want these walls to look perfect when they're done. Similar to what they would do on a job site or a mason would do on a job site. Only a little faster. Okay, a lot faster. <laughs> now they're going to hit these once and hopefully brush it at the end. Normally on a job site, you hit them, brush it, hit it again. Make those joints real slick. What they're doing here, and the reason why you tool a mortar, mortar joint and a brick wall is to seal that joint off. Create a good seal of the mortar back to the masonry unit itself. Keep moisture out of the wall. That's why the head joints are to be full. Full head joint and a well-struck bed joint creates a watertight wall. So that's what we're doing here right now. Let's see if we can find a different technique. Just an S joiner here, not a barrel joiner. <laughs> Barrel joiners are for hacks. There you go. It is okay to hold the mortar again. This is a contest. These guys are going as fast as they can. Um, big wall, a lot of joints to do here. Somebody's going to sleep well tonight. Take a look down the way. Let's check in with Jake. He's working the back side of the wall. On the barrel joiner again, he's going as fast as he can. So the back side of the wall is the hardest one. So you notice a couple of these guys with the bigger walls, they're working the back side first. The reason why they're working the back side of the wall is because that's usually where you can't see what's going on. So generally speaking, there's going to be more holes in the back side of the wall. Of course, once they get over 20 holes in the wall, it's a 100 brick deduction from your final count. So these guys know. 
The money's on the line. The trip to Vegas is on the line. I gotta get those beat holes filled in. No voids. So notice here too, see how close our mason is to the wall. They do that on purpose for the competition because they don't want to be moving the material any further than they have to. Uh, but makes it a little bit more tricky for tooling the joints because you end up so close to the wall. So, what constitutes a void? Let's take a look at that. Here on this wall, you can see that will be a void if our mason here doesn't come back and fill it in. And he hasn't got to the back side of the wall yet. Generally speaking, if I take their joiner and run it across that b-hole from a half brick in either direction, I'll tool towards that b-hole. And if it doesn't fill in with mortar, there's still a hole there or a void there when we're done. That'll be counted as one void in the project. Now, you see the mortar's kind of pulled away from the head joint here a little bit. If I take an S joiner or a barrel joiner and I go to kind of try to tool that myself, that'll compress back into the brick that would not be considered a void. They get 20 of them when we go to judge this after they get the tool. And minus 100 brick to your final count. Conclusion of the tooling, we're going to start judging and then we go right over to our junior Spec Mix Bricklayer 500. That is a competition for apprentices, so the students right now learning how to be masons. Uh, these today are all working apprentices, so they're actually on job sites, which have a pretty good contest. Today, I think we have eight or so competitors there, seven, eight, something like that. They're the future of our industry. We're looking forward to that contest. Mike. Rolf. Battery. Got an idea here? It's painful to watch, I know. But people at home can't see this. Sorry, folks, we had to get a charger on our camera here. You'd have missed the best. Okay, now we're running the bed joints here, so this goes a lot faster. Let me see if I can get around them. So here you see, moving quickly now as we finish the bed joints. See there, he sees a little void, and he'll fix it. This is what they do on a job site. We're 10 minutes in, 10 minutes to go, so these guys are all about halfway. As you can see, it's, it's a lot of work to do kind of quickly, but it's not impossible to manage, so 
Again, the idea here is to clean these walls up as best you can and make them look as close to a finished product as you could. These walls will not be comparable to what these guys are doing a normal day work again. Any of these masons, this is one hour. This is normally what a mason is doing a whole day. Um, they're getting it done in an hour here, so it's uh, eight times or seven times faster than what they would normally place these bricks. Slow these guys down just a little bit, and they're unbelievable mason. these bigger walls to see if those guys have gassed out yet. There's a big one. John, watch out. So you can see here from the bed joint fast they can. Nick, getting back to the striking, I'll tell you what, when, when we changed the rules to start including the striking, I thought the 20 minutes was way too much time. But I'll tell you what, it takes every second for these guys to get those walls done up. And uh, I think this might be the hardest part of the, of the uh, competition. Well, certainly, Mike, they've been laying brick for an hour after they built those starter courses. There isn't much left gas, very much gas left in the tank for these guys. Yeah, doing a whole day's work here in an hour. So you can see Roman's doing his best with a lot of joints just to get as much of this tool as he can. He'll spend the last couple minutes giving the wall a quick brush. We'll try to catch him doing that here right at the end. You can see how much of a difference it makes to the final appearance of the wall quickly. What do we have for time yet, Mike? We've got eight minutes left. Eight minutes, eight minutes to go. See, Roman's got a ways to go. Here's some voids on this end. He's coming down the wall to fix that as fast as he can right now. On the back side of the wall, you can see he's got the ends cleaned up. Back to the wall cleaned up pretty good. I'll tell you what, Nick. After all this rain we had today, sun is out. Nice little breeze. Beautiful fall, autumn day here in Wisconsin. These guys are just about done. We got about seven minutes left to go. So here we have the tender and the mason looking the wall together, making sure there's no voids. Now watch, sending them back. That's what that's teamwork right there. So your mason tender is an integral part of your team. He's making sure we don't get clipped for deduction here. Give his mason the best chance wins. Of course, your mason wins. You're going to Vegas. Woohoo! Is the mortar actually setting up, Jake? No. No, it's not. You know how to be delicate with delicate conditions. <laughs> a lot of joints to, to hit here. What do you think, Jake? Burning a little bit? Yep. Sleep well tonight, buddy? <laughs> See here, nice clean wall. So why do you why do you brush the wall? It takes the last little bit off.
Five minutes left. Five minutes. Great day, we snuck in in between the rain. Clean looking wall. Again, our national sponsors, Belden Brick Company, Steel, Steel Saws, Steel Equipment. Hey Nick, did you get a did you get a look at the Ford Expedition up on the you know, Mike, I don't up know on the we, rocks there? Well, we have seen that. Why don't I mean, we take a look? That's, that's a tough truck right there. To Speaking get up of Ford, the that's a nice looking truck. I don't know how to. Let's see if we can get in there a little bit. Well, speaking of Ford, why don't we go take a look at this Ford truck over here? While we watch the end. Good crowd today, all considering the rain. There's a Ford truck brought by a local Ford dealer today. It's a beautiful truck, two inch lift. A couple minutes to go here, almost done. Preparation to get past any infractions. Judges in here doing a little bit of judging work around the guys. Jake's wall cleaned up pretty nice. Let his first go at it. Well, you folks, you're here cheering on Jake. Jake. Time, not his first time, right? Not his first time, <laughs> not ours either. Yeah, right He's on. Been to every one of these. Yeah, he does a good job, right? Well, he's he's gonna be in the running. All right. I can see that. <laughs> Let's see how Jake's doing here. No voids. No voids this year, huh? I didn't add voids. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on there, Mike? What do we got going there? You know, uh, Jake's toolbox. <coughs> that used no, to be mine. Grandpa's toolbox. Uh, Grandpa's toolbox. That, 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 so Jake, my own toolbox. Jake took your tools. Huh? Jake took your tools. <laughs> no, I got them at home, but I give him the box. <laughs> he wanted a box to go to Vegas, he so I give him. To, to Vegas. There it is. <laughs> Jake's old blue toolbox. Yep. With the, with the luggage took it from Grandpa on. and left the luggage sticking on it. Okay, we're one minute left here. We're one minute left. An no overview of what's going on. Yeah, we're here at Fond du Lac Stone up in their quarry. Beautiful location. There's some stone here. Come to Fond du Lac. 30 seconds left. Who's got the who's got the thing? Rick's got it. Ten.
Put That's it. Push tools down, guys. Tools down, guys. Good job, everybody. Down to 454. The Mason is Ro Roman Grable. His tender is Greg Carslin. KMI Masonry. Come on up, guys. All right, well done. Roman Grable. There it is. And Greg Carslin is labor. Second place. Did a heck of a job out there. Fighting through all the questions that we had. Amazing. It was the two brick guy, Nick says. <laughs> Outstanding. Great job. Great job. Congratulations Great job, to Roman. Guys. Second place this year to 2020 Bricklayer, regional Bricklayer. Some little bit different guys that doesn't happen very often. This year's first place winner also got the Craftsmanship Award. So that's not done every time. So it's a big round of applause for that. Um, what he's going to receive is a Marshalltown trowel, a four foot stabila level, a Marshalltown tool bag. He's also going to see $600 cash. Uh, in first place, we have a 10 pack of Gator Back Motor Boards, a $200 gift card from Ford, $600 cash, and the trip to Las Vegas to go to the 2021 Bricklayer 500, which I've been to and it's fantastic. With a brick count of 502, the Mason Jake Brock is tender Nick Miller from Brock Corporation. Good job, Jake. All right, Jake Brock. Come on up. Adjusted brick count, 502. And he got the, uh, he got the craftsmanship the cutter, which is a and cool. the first place. There he is. There's Jake and his buddy and That's tender right, Nick Miller. I missed that. He also gets a chance to win a F-250 out at Vegas, which is a lot of other great prizes. We're also going to have Chris Tuig from Holiday Automotive come up here, and he is going to hand him a check from Ford. Um, welcome, Chris. Thank you for everything, Holiday, and Ford is gone. Grab the gator out of my truck. They're in the back of my truck. Here. Sir, you want to free one for me? Hurry up. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, pause. Let's go get the gator boards. Oh. Behind you, there appears to be a November squall. <laughs> the Great Squall, possibly. The Great Squall. I think this is weather similar to when the Edmund Fitzgerald might have gone down in this. Really, I think that's what it looked like in this day. Yeah, a day like today. We're gonna fight through it quickly. We are in the two-stick Mac. American flag holding strong up there. Is that an eagle? I, I thought I saw one. Yeah. Uh, right. Yeah. Yep. Bald eagle. Oh, this is fantastic. All right. Sooner the better, guys. It's getting black back there. Marketing brilliant. Marketing brilliant. Marketing brilliant. Hey, guys, a big hand for Jake and Nick. Fantastic. I'll bring that Ford truck home from Vegas. Yeah, bring Wisconsin win, Jake. No pressure. Oh, yeah. 